Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of System Shock Radio. I, as always, am your host Nigel, and uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys, uh, it's been a little while, hasn't it? Um, sorry I haven't been able to go live as of late, but uh, I am here, and uh, without further ado, we're going to get right into today's uh, topics. Uh, we got a few here today, but... Um, as we sort of wait for people to come in, uh, of course, um, we have an Instagram page. Uh, go check us out at Shop Radio on Instagram. Uh, I have a YouTube channel at my name, Nigel Dixie. And we have uh, System Shop Radio and Nigel Dixie Tales from the Labyrinth episodes archived on both. So uh, whenever you get a chance, go check those out. And I'll even uh, link those uh, in the comment section here. But... Uh, without further ado, let's get right into uh, today's topics and, of course, uh, continue showing that love and support um, for, for this page. I know you guys uh, have been doing so already, and I thank you guys for that, but um, let's get right into it. So, uh, first topic at hand uh, is going to be talking about a game I just recently completed, and that is Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. Now, um, as a kid, it, I loved playing Sly. However, uh, the game I pl uh, grew up playing was Sly 2. Um, blame my dad for that one, but uh, we didn't have the games in order. Uh, I had Sly 2, and then when I got my PS3, I uh, bought and played Sly 4. But um, Sly 1 and 3... I haven't been able to revisit it until recently. I just, of course, played Sly 1 uh, on PS3. Thank God for emulation. But um, it was pretty fun. And uh, to be honest, seeing a lot of the stuff that was in the later games, uh, you know, Sly 2 and Sly 4, uh, seeing them in Sly 1, seeing kind of how they got their start was pretty cool. And then even seeing some of the differences, uh, stuff they got rid of, by the time Sly 2 rolled around, comparing Sly 1 to Sly 2. Of course, Sly 1 has uh, a lives system, and uh, each enemy is one hit, but that, but you're also one hit. So, uh, uh, by the time Sly 2 came around, there was a health bar, or and enemies died in actually a few hits. I think it was like three or four, but in the first game, each enemy was one hit, but you were also uh, one hit death. And... Um, there was lives and there was a game over screen and um there was an emphasis on uh stealth of course sly cooper is a thief and um he's actually a thief from a line of master thieves it runs in his family the cooper family and uh basically the plot of the first game is that the fiendish five uh which is an organization of villains so we got Sir Raleigh the Frog, um, Mugshot the Bulldog, uh, Ms. Ruby the Crocodile, Panda King the Panda, of course, and uh, Clockwork the Owl, oh, and the main villain for the first game. Basically, he, they killed Sly's parents and uh, have stolen the Thievius Raccoonus, and basically, we gotta venture around, defeat them, and get the pages of the book back. And... Uh, while getting the pages of the book back are optional, actually, uh, I decided to uh, go for them all and complete the Thievius Raccoonus um, because the game's, of course, called Thievius Raccoonus, and that, that's what they stole from us. So I uh, wanted to get my book back, and I did just that. And it was actually, like I said, it was a lot of fun. And uh, one of the things I liked a lot about it is uh, the switch up of gameplay styles. So uh, you had Sly do some stuff, uh, but he wasn't alone. So uh, Sly has two main companions with him. There's Bentley, the turtle, the uh, brains of the current day Cooper clan, and then Murray, the muscle of the Cooper gang. And um, while they had much bigger roles as the Sly Cooper series went on. Uh, in the first game, they did some stuff as well. For Murray, uh, it was a lot of the van races. And uh, the van races weren't that fun, but thank God there was only two of them. And uh, for Bentley, it was 
not only pointing out uh, certain stuff for slides they communicated, but also the uh, hacking mini game. So that was uh, pretty cool to see them get involved as well. And uh, like I said, stuff that would be carried over into the later games. But of course, uh, by the time slide two came around, Murray and Bentley were fully playable with their own uh, gameplay styles and missions and everything. So going back and seeing how um, slide one started off and then comparing it to slide two was uh, pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. And um, it's a game where or it's a lot of, like I said, and I keep re repeating, it's a lot of fun because it really is. And uh, all the sneaking around and stuff is pretty cool. And uh, if you're able to, I definitely recommend checking out this game. Especially if you're like me where you started off later in the series and want to see how it started out. Oh, and unfortunately, Sly Cooper is a game that has it. it um, it's a game series, I should say, that hasn't made a game in a while. Um, now rumor has it that apparently there was supposed to be a Sly Cooper movie with a game tied into that and it was going to be sort of like a reboot but um, because the Ratchet and Clank movie didn't end up doing that well oh, um, ultimately plans for the movie and the reboot uh, were pretty much axed so right now it's sort of in in what's called development hell where Basically, nothing's really um, happening with it. It's not completely dead, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot actively going on with the series. So, and that that's pretty upsetting. But hopefully, we will see Sly Cooper return someday. But uh, nevertheless, we're gonna move on to the next topic, and that is which WWE game has the best soundtrack now. I played a lot of WWE video games in my 20 years of life, and out of all the games I've played, uh, there's three games that I boiled down to having uh, my favorite soundtracks. And what's funny is these games actually came out in a row. So that's SmackDown vs. Raw 2007, SmackDown vs. Raw 2008, and SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. And all three, in my opinion, are the absolute uh, have some of the absolute best soundtracks in the game and uh, for me personally probably because I'm a huge fan of rock music and uh, all three games had their fair share of rock music there's rock and there's uh, some rap thrown in and uh, it seems to be quite a bit of balance to really get uh, the uh, blood pumping and get you excited to play um, the the game in hand or sometimes you don't even uh, play the game you're just stuck there in the menu just jamming out to the music and everything and unfortunately these soundtracks in WWE video games is something that ultimately got phased out later on as um, we got later on into the series by the time SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 came around uh, like original soundtracks were pretty much gone entirely it was all like uh, wrestler theme songs and it kind of made its comeback uh, by the time we got to WWE 2K15. That's when we sort of got the soundtracks back in. But ultimately, he uh, wasn't as good as the other ones. And um, a lot of fun listening to these soundtracks. Now, uh, my personal fa favorite, um, I got to go. Well, honestly, it's a toss-up between uh, 2007 and 2008. Both have really really solid soundtracks i think i think for me personally 2007 wins out by just a little bit i think but uh 2008 is a very very close second and i personally think that if like maybe either a song was removed or a song was replaced in the 2007 soundtrack 2008 would beat it out but oh as it were or i gotta go with 2007 for a soundtrack and uh, 2008 is my second favorite, and 2009 is my third favorite. It, now, oh, nothing against 2009. Like I said, 2009, fantastic soundtrack. But um, when it comes to my favorite soundtracks, I gotta go with 07 and 08. And, um, but let me know what your guys' favorite uh, WWE video game soundtracks are. But uh, we're gonna move on to the uh, next topic. And that is going to be talking about the Buffalo Bills this season. Now, let me preface this by saying 
I'm not really a sports fan. Never really been that big of a sports fan. However, I will give credit where credit is due. I am a man who will give someone their props when they're doing really well. And this season, the Buffalo Bills have been doing really, really well. They've been uh, playing great, winning their games, and they're on the verge of going to the Super Bowl, which, um, if I am not mistaken, um, just one second, and a quick Google search, search here. So the last, so the Bills have never uh, won a Super Bowl, oh, but the last time in, that they went to a Super Bowl was in 1994. Or now, 1994 was a while ago. I wasn't even born yet. But to f the fact that they may, may, may be going uh, this year and may be on the uh, verge of going after a really, really fantastic season. Me, for me personally, that's really awesome and fantastic to see. And uh, I'd love to see the Bills go all the way and uh, win this season. So, um, for, for you Bills fans, the Bills Mafia, as you guys call yourselves, uh, congrats and best of luck. And finally, finally, my last topic is something that I'll admit I've been struggling with a bit, but it's something that's important and that keeps me going. And ultimately, that keeps a lot of people going, and that is optimism. Now, what is optimism? So, uh, the dictionary definition is hopefulness and confidence about the future or the successful outcome of something. People with optimistic mindsets try to find the best in every situation and try to use positivity to keep going forward and to keep pushing on. And for many, Optimism is a driving force, and and look and look at the definition again: hopefulness and confidence about the future. So, oh, that's pretty much saying, in, uh, no matter what happens, and I expect the best out of the future. The future is going to be uh, fantastic. It's going to be great. Everything is going to work out oh, fine. And it says, or the successful outcome of something. In, in any situation, they're hoping for the best outcome. And uh, optimism is something that I feel like we all have struggled with at some point, staying in a, fan, staying a uh, good mindset, being optimistic about what's to come, and uh, trying to maintain a positive mood. It's definitely difficult. Well, I feel like it's not an easy thing to be optimistic, but it's necessary and it's important. And I believe that uh, the best will happen. And I believe that everything works out oh, fine in the end. Even in a situation that seems bad if, or, or something good co will come out of even the worst of situations. And I'm here to tell you, ooh, just hold on, just keep going, just stay strong, and uh, you'll pull through. But that's gonna do it for this episode not really a long one uh thank you all so much for watching thank you all so much for tuning in uh if you did enjoy uh leave a like leave a reaction and all that helps and uh like i said check us out on instagram at system shock radio uh i know i follow the bunch you guys already <laughs> and uh also check me out on youtube at nigel dixie where uh both system shock radio and uh, Tales from the Labyrinth have been archived, so uh, go check those out, and I will see you guys later. Peace.